I'm going to jump right into our program because we have a pretty packed agenda today. Um, I do wish that we could be meeting in person, uh, but with the state of the world, we're going to be doing this virtually for one more year, and hopefully next year we'll be able to get back to the event that we love so much. So as I said, welcome to our annual Kinship Care Month celebration. This is our seventh annual Kinship Care Month in New York State for celebrating and the eighth National Kinship Care Month in New York State. So today we're going to be kicking it off um, with myself. I'm Ray Glazer, the director of the New York State Kinship Navigator Program. And then I'm going to turn it over to our speakers for the day, who are our past Cura Champion awardees and our champions in the legislature. Uh, Assemblyman Andrew Hevesy, Senator Shelley Mayer, and New York State Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins. And then we're going to turn it over to Ryan Johnson, our Associate Director of the New York State Kinship Navigator, to go through our Cura Award Ceremony, where we have some really exciting awardees this year, our outstanding professionals, caregivers, <laughs> champions, and organizations. And then we have a very special award for you today, our Lifetime Achievement Award for Gerard Wallace, the founding director of the New York State Kinship Navigator Program. So have your tissues ready for that. And then to conclude today's program, we're going to go through the Kinship Care Toolkit presentation um, from Pat Lincourt, the Associate Commissioner for the Addiction Treatment and Recovery. That's been a two-year project that we are ready to roll out for caregivers and professionals. So pretty packed agenda today. Thank you so much for joining us again. So as I said, I'm Ray Glazer. I'm the director of the New York State Kinship Navigator Program. I have the pleasure of kicking off our program today. Um, I wanna talk just a little bit about the New York State Kinship Navigator staff and then the system of care and then the history of Kinship Care Month. So our New York State Kinship Navigator team is comprised of myself, Ryan Johnson, our associate director, our program coordinator, Anthony Williams, that you hear on our helpline most of the time, helping caregivers out all across the state and directing them, giving the information and referral that they need um, and making sure that they are connected to the services that they need. Our Western New York Regional Coordinator, Heather Rosakowski, she is in Buffalo. She mans our helpline as well and also provides virtual case management to kinship caregivers in the seven county region in Western New York. And also our Capital District Regional Coordinator, Kari Coria, who is in Albany with Ryan. She is virtual case manager for our Federal Kinship Navigator Project and works with caregivers in the Capital District so many counties, we keep fluctuating. It's eight counties, I believe, that she's working with caregivers um, and everybody loves Kari. So we have a fantastic team. Um, we span from Buffalo to Albany. Uh, we connect virtually and always get the job done. And I'm so proud of the Navigator team for really espousing what Kinship Care Month is all about and helping these caregivers make sure that they could get connected to the services that they need um, and just being fantastic advocates. So thank you to the Kinship Navigator team today and always it's such a pleasure working with you and really we're indebted to the service that you provide. So let's talk about kinship care in New York State. Kinship care, as everybody on this presentation is aware, is a relative or a non-relative who's acting as a parent and is related to a child through blood, marriage, or adoption. Um, they're caring for the child in the absence of the biological parent when the parent is unwilling or unable to parent. There's 130,000 plus kinship households in New York State. We're mostly talking about grandparents, um, but we work with aunts, uncles, adult siblings, and fictive kin who are family, friends, godparents, neighbors, um, anybody that's stepping in to care for the child. Um, and the kinship children in New York State, um, these are rough numbers because it's really hard to get an estimate. Sometimes kids are in care for a couple of months, sometimes it's for 18 years, um, but roughly we're looking at about 200,000 kids in care in New York State and one in 11 children will be in kinship care at some point in their lifetime. Um, we see about half of our caregivers that have interactions with child welfare services, um, but very few of them are actually in foster care homes. The most important thing to note today is that 
as of 2021, the definition of kinship caregiver has been signed into law. So there is finally a term of art that's being used for all of these kinship families across New York State, which has been a huge boon to kinship care in 2021. We're very excited about it. It gives the name and the recognition that these kinship caregivers so very richly deserve. So that's kinship care. And what does kinship care look like in New York State? New York State is very lucky to have a robust kinship system of care. We've got the Kinship Navigator Program. Um, we serve the entire state. We serve all kinship families, prospective caregivers and professionals. You know, we're information referral and education for families all across the state. Um, we're not an in-person service, but we're able to give out kinship information, referrals to local agencies, and make sure that caregivers are educated on the most common facets of kinship care. Um, the Office of Children and Family Services funds 14 kinship programs currently serving 25 counties. They serve informal kinship families, so families with no legal designation and legal custodians. They're able to offer case management services, assistance with petitions in family court, applying for financial assistance, support groups, youth activities. They are in-person services, and each program services two counties in New York State. You have your regional permanency resource centers. There are 15 programs that serve all 62 counties in New York State. They serve post-guardianship and post-adoptive families. And we have a scattering of kinship programs funded by other sources across the state. Um, some with as little as $500 for support groups and some are more robustly funded. Um, so it's pretty good system. Uh, we're always looking to make it more robust. Uh, of course, um, but all of these pieces work together to serve the kinship families in New York State. That's who we're here to celebrate today. We are here to celebrate kinship caregivers and, of course, those that serve them, but definitely those kinship caregivers. Kinship Care Month in New York State, um, it was started by the Kinship Navigator in 2012 by the founding director, Jerry Wallace, who we're going to hear plenty about today. Um, in 2013, the Kinship Navigator and King Care Coalition hosted a summit um, where we had one of our recommendations was to implement September as Kinship Care Month in New York State. And in 2014, that happened. It was officially recognized as the month to celebrate kinship care. And ever since then, starting in 2015, we've been able to hold an annual event recognizing kinship caregivers, the natural resource that is available to children in New York State and across the country um, and really helps children do so much better. These caregivers that are so selfless and serving the children um, when the parents are unable to do so. So every single year we do an event, uh, mostly it's in Albany, it's fantastic. We come together, we hug, we have a wonderful lunch and we give out awards. We're not able to do that in person this year, but we're sending all the love through the computer screen. Um, to celebrate these families. So they very much richly deserve that. This year, we've got our virtual celebration. We also have celebrations that are planned locally in New York City, Yonkers, Buffalo, Rochester, and Plattsburgh, as well as many others. Um, at the Navigator website, you can take a look at our calendar for more information on those events. And they're also posted on social media. So very briefly, we just want to talk about legislative resolutions that have been passed for Kinship Care Month. Since 2014, the New York State Legislature has passed a resolution declaring September as Kinship Care Month. We've had so many champions in the legislature, Barbara Clark, Shelley Mayer, Ellen Jaffe, Andrew Hevesy, Senator Marty Golden, um, Velminette Montgomery, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and Shelley Mayer. We have some of those wonderful voices and faces here today to talk to us as well. Um, and the kinship community really thanks all of our legislative partners for their support and their um, steadfast advocacy to make September as Kinship Care Month. Very much so, thank you. The governor's proclamation, um, this is an old version. We got the new version for 2021 at 10.59 this morning. So right on time for our event. We weren't good enough to plop it into PowerPoint yet, but you get the general idea that it'll be posted on our website. Um, it's just freshly been issued. 
And since 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo has issued proclamations every year declaring September as Kinship Care Month. And of course, this year, now we have a new governor that has furthered our cause. So many thanks to that. We thank all the leadership and staff at the Office of Children and Family Services. They are uh, the Navigators funder and also been such a strong support at advocating for the cause of kinship care in New York State. Um, for many years. So we very much thank Sheila Poole, our commissioner. Um, Lisa and I should have practiced your last name. It's such an oversight. I'm sorry. It's right in front of us. Our deputy commissioner, Carol McCarthy, Renee Halleck, and Linda Floresman, many others that I can't even name today. Thank you so much for your support across the years. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, so do our families, professionals, caregivers. So thank you for that. So at this point in time, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Andrew Hevesy, our first speaker of the day. Um, we've got Andrew Hevesy, Shelly Mayer, and Andrea Stewart Cousins today to give some remarks on kinship care for us. They are all uh, past Kira awardees. Um, a little bit about Assemblyman Hevesy. He served as a representative um, of the 28th District since 2005. In 2015, he was named the chair of Social Services Committee. He's been a champion for issues such as homelessness, um, protecting victims of human trafficking, domestic violence, and advancing the cause of those that have experienced ACEs or adverse childhood experiences. In 2021, he took over as the chair for Children and Families Committee. He's been such a strong advocate for kinship funding. He's helped sponsor and pass kinship caregiver definition bills and was the assembly sponsor of the Kinship Care Month resolution. Um, thank you so much, Assemblyman Hevesy. You've been such a strong partner and advocate for the kinship uh, cause for years, and we really appreciate it. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Ray, for that incredible introduction. I, I want you to travel with me to everywhere I go for that introduction. <laughs> if we can. But thank you to you and to everybody else. Uh, and uh, happy Kinship Care Month to all my friends. Um, thank you to uh, Chairwoman, uh, I see Senator Mayer is here, who's been fighting this fight well before I got engaged in this. Um, so it's good to see you here as well. And I understand that you're going to be hearing from uh, Senate Majority Leader, Leader Cousins, or she has a statement. Uh, also, OCFS Commissioner uh, Poole, always good to see you. Uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. Ryan Johnson. And then finally, Ryan, my friend, um, who is responsible for a lot of these victories. Uh, we continue to work together. And then that's the last of my hellos. Let me get to Jerry Wallace. Hello, Jerry. How are you, sir? So Jerry, I got to tell you, I'm so excited to be here. Um, and I want to point out to everybody listening that um, there are some significant kinship wins on my own resume, none of which happened without Jerry Wallace. I didn't understand it. I didn't know it. I didn't um, even have a, a sense of what this issue was until I figured out, um, listen to Jerry. And I have been, and I know the legislature has been, although I remember we had a, uh, uh, an award event a couple of years ago where a couple of elected officials took over and weren't listening to you, Jerry. I, I didn't mean to bring that up. I know um, that was a tough moment for you, but, um, but, but honestly, Jerry, I'm so excited that um, on my own resume and our resume and everybody in the kinship uh, world is we've defined kinship. So it's not just blood marriage or adoption. And for me, um, uh, and I know for Jerry as well, that means that every year, and I don't know the numbers, but it just keeps coming, kids being diverted away from foster care. Every kid that goes into kin care is a kid who doesn't go into a more expensive system that has worse outcomes. That is a heroic victory. That is a Jerry Wallace victory. And I am uh, eternally grateful for that and for your guidance and your continued friendship. Um, I do want to say I'm a little mad at you for sticking me with Ryan. Um, you know, I'm doing the best I can. Um, but I, I do want to tell you one thing. Um, we need to focus on kinship, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because I believe that kin care is one of the ways to stop and mitigate and prevent childhood trauma. Um, and it's going to push us into a really uncomfortable area that I believe that the legislature has to start talking about, which is the hidden foster care system. We are pulling kids away from their parents giving them to families and not giving those families support. So the families have physical custody, but then they don't have the rights to put the kid in school. They don't have the right to make medical decisions. It is just wrongheaded. And it's done in the under the guise of saving money for the state, which I completely understand. So there's no finger pointing here. So I understand that. 
But what you get is long-term societal damage. Those are the kids who were traumatized, who were ripped away from their parents. If you look at adverse childhood experiences, it's on the list. Take them away from their parents if the kids are in jail. If you take them away across the border from their parents, it's all adverse childhood experiences. And if the state gives somebody to kin care without any help and takes the kids away from their parents, that's a trauma too. So you have traumatized kids. We're not helping the families. We're not helping the kids. And then as a society, I'm going to stop soon. Um, then as a society, we look in the papers and we wonder, well, why are there mentally ill people on the street? Why is there so many shootings? Why is there homeless numbers rising? Why do so many people need alcohol and substance abuse? Why are so many kids coming out of school? And I'm trying to tell everyone, and I believe Jerry and Ryan, and we all understand this, it's trauma. And in the hidden foster care system, children are being traumatized by our action and it has to stop. So that's our next endeavor, but none of it would happen without Jerry Wallace and all my friends here at Kin. I'm excited about that work. Uh, Shelly, I look forward to talking to you about that. And Jerry, congratulations. You're a great man and I'm really uh, um, uh, grateful and honored uh, to have learned from you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, Assemblyman Havasu, we appreciate it. I'm sorry to report that you're stuck with Ryan and I going forward, but you know we'll do the very best that we can to fill Jerry's shoes. <laughs> okay, so next up on our agenda, we have Shelly Mayer to say a few words, Senator Mayer, um, just a little bit about her. She was elected in New York State Senate uh, back in April, 2018, and she's subsequently been reelected in 2018 and 2020. Um, in addition to being the chair of education committee, she is a staunch advocate for kinship care. She sponsored the kinship care month resolution in both the assembly and the Senate, and she spearheaded a bill to study grand family housing issues, which is so very much needed. Uh, Senator Mayer is our 2017 kinship champion Cura awardee, and we are very honored to have her speak here today. Senator Mayer. I am muted, but now I am not. <laughs> you should know. Thank you, Ray. And it's really an honor to be here and a pleasure. And thank you to my really remarkable friend, Chairman Hevesy, who I served in the assembly with, but has been a person of tremendous courage on issues that require courage. And sometimes we forget that courage in talking about children is one of the most important qualities. We can't shy away from the things that are difficult. And he hasn't. And neither has the kinship community. And I always say that I was, I was taught about kinship by my friends in Yonkers when I was in the assembly, over 1,000 families uh, that were kinship providers. And under the you know, aegis of the Family Service Society of Yonkers and also family ties, these families educated me that they uh, were really doing heroic work and as Hevesy said, uh, avoiding foster care and providing a loving but very challenging environment. They were the ones who educated me on the need for housing. And I fought to get money for housing study and Jerry was the brains behind it. And I will blame our former governor that that very important study on the need for housing for kinship families sat on a bookshelf somewhere in someone's office but that is the kind of thing we have to focus on next. Um, we have to provide affordable housing for these families, uh, as well as provide the depth of financial and other supports. I do wanna shout out my Yonkers friends and of course my leader, Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, the majority leader who really also educated me on how imperative this was to speak out about kinship care, to fight for funding, for our providers and for our families. So I, I thank them all. Uh, special thanks to Jerry for, again, not only educating me, but being a thoughtful, persistent, and effective leader who really uh, changed the face of kinship care discussion in Albany. I'm happy that we were able to uh, get the definition changed. Uh, we fought for funding for our kinship care providers, and we got some additional money in the budget. That was again, a lot due to our leader. And I wanna shout out Kathleen and Fano Coleman, who uh, I'm honoring along with you are honoring for their service as providing care for three of their grandchildren. Anyone who's a parent or a grandparent like me knows how challenging it is 
to take on this personal responsibility. So as a human being, forget being an elected official, I just want to salute the kinship providers and those that provide assistance and support to them. And then as an elected official say, it is our job to fight for these families and fight for these kids and fight for this very effective way of dealing with challenges that families face. So thank you for letting me come by and be a supporter, a friend, a listener, and a fighter for what these kids and families deserve. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Senator Mayor, uh, very much appreciated. And if I may, I, I think you nailed it spot on. Um, you know, as a professional, as an elected official, as somebody that's involved in the world of kinship care, um, you know, it's very important to further the cause and further the education. Um, but I think that's what makes this population so special is that it, you feel it both as a professional, but also as a human being. Um, very special people that we're working with and it makes it easy to want to further the cause for kinship care. So thank you for all your support through the years. We really appreciate it. Okay, our third speaker today um, was unfortunately unable to be with us in person. So we do have a video recording um, from Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins. Um, a little bit of history about the Senator. She's been wildly recognized as a trailblazer in local and state government and been a champion for progressive action. Um, she's had amazing history um, with furthering the cause uh, for women, for African-American women across the state. Um, she's also been a longtime friend of Kinship Care as an active local presence, uh, partnering with the Family Service Society of Yonkers, very close relationship with the program in Westchester and Rockland County to help caregivers in her district. She's also been a sponsor for Kinship Care Month in the Senate this year and was our 2016 Kinship Champion Cure Awardee. So thank you so much, Senator Stewart Cousins. Um, Unfortunate you aren't able to be with us today, but we do have some recorded remarks that we'd like to share with you. Seems as if we're having a slight technical difficulty, so bear with us for just a moment, folks. Hello, I'm Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins. I'm pleased to join you all in celebration of National Kinship Care Month. Thank you to the New York State Kinship Navigator Program, Family Service Society of Yonkers, and Family Ties, both in my district, that support kinship caregivers and the incredible work that they do. One in 11 children live in kinship care at some point before turning 18. For black children, the odds are one in five. Kinship caregivers act as a lifeline to children, often stepping in as a result of difficult family relations caused by parental addictions, incarcerations, mental illness, and other unfortunate circumstances. The loving family environment a kinship caregiver provides can be transformational for a child, helping to ease the adjustment to change and reduce the likelihood they will experience behavioral problems or school disruptions. I'm a longtime supporter of kinship caregiving. In fact, this year I co-sponsored the resolution with my colleague and friend, Senator Shelley Mayer, proclaiming September as Kinship Care Month. One of my favorite annual events sponsored by my office is the Angel Project. In partnership with Family Services Society of Yonkers and Family Ties, we fulfill the holiday gift list of caregivers in my district through donations provided by kind-hearted individuals and organizations. It is an incredibly moving event where we show caregivers just how truly special and appreciated they are, and I look forward to it every year. For all our caregivers do for children and for the community at large, the Senate Democratic majority under my leadership is committed to ensuring kinship caregivers have the supportive resources necessary to raise the children in their care. After nearly two decades of advocacy efforts from organizations like New York State Kinship Navigator, this year the legislature passed a bill to extend kinship caregiver legal status to non-parent relatives and family friends who are raising children in New York. We know that the financial margins for kinship caregivers are often very slim. Every extra dollar goes towards the children in their care. 
This law will have a profound effect on caregivers' lives, allowing them to apply for benefits they previously could not utilize. Also, as part of this year's budget, we restored more than $2.5 million in funding to New York's 14 kinship programs across 25 counties. The Senate Democratic majority and I will continue to build awareness and provide support for kinship caregivers across New York. Congratulations to you and to all of the honorees. Let us make sure that everyone knows that September is Kinship Caregiver Awareness Month. Thank you again for all you do in support of our children. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Senator Stewart Cousins. Um, and thank you to all of our kinship champions in the legislature, specifically those that were able to speak with us today. So we really appreciate your support. We couldn't do it without you. And we all thank you as the community of kinship caregivers and kinship care professionals. So at this point in time, we're going to move on with our agenda. Um, this is personally my favorite portion of the agenda every year. We're going to do our CURE Awards ceremony. And today we have Ryan Johnson, the Associate Director of the New York State Kinship Navigator, that's going to be acting as a moderator for our awards ceremony. Uh, Ryan's been with the Kinship Navigator program since 2014 and was recently promoted to the Associate Director. He is 100% my right-hand person on the program and is an incredible resource for all things policy-related, um, kinship agenda, uh, kin care coalition. He is the chair of the kin care coalition in New York State, and we absolutely couldn't do our work without him. So I'm very personally grateful to have Ryan on the kinship navigator team. And I know there are so many professionals and families out there that would echo my sentiment uh, in working with him at the navigator program. So over to you, Ryan. Thanks very much, Ray. Excited to be here today and excited to honor um, our Cura awardees this year. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Kin Care Coalition. The Kin Care Coalition uh, has been around for a long time. In fact, uh, Jerry was a, uh, the catalyst for starting the coalition. So, again, just another way in which Jerry has had a huge impact on kinship care uh, in New York State. Uh, Jerry, along with AARP, started the coalition many, many years ago, uh, over a decade ago. Um, it serves as a voice for kinship caregivers in New York State. Our goal is to really be able to elevate the voice of kinship caregivers, uh, many of whom we're going to be honoring here today with the Cura Award, to talk to leaders like uh, Assemblyman Andrew Hevesy and Senator Shelley Mayer and uh, Senator Stuart Cousins and many others who have uh, had an impact on kinship care in the legislature, as well as uh, act as as a voice to, to the state agency, Office of Children and Family Services and Office of Temporary Disability Assistance. Um, so that's the, the goal of the coalition is to elevate those voices and give kinship caregivers an opportunity to share their stories and talk about the issues that uh, they face on the front lines. You can check out the coalition website here, uh, always expanding, always being redone. So be sure to check that out. And we do send out a newsletter if you're interested in signing up for that. Uh, check out the coalition website. It's at the bottom of uh, the homepage. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the Cura Awards. The Cura Awards were established in 2015 to recognize the outstanding achievements and contributions of those involved with kinship care. Uh, it has developed over time, but we currently have four uh, areas that we honor people in. And so we like to recognize kinship caregivers. They are the ones we're here for. This is what Kinship Care Month is about. Uh, we've got a number of kinship caregivers we're honoring here today. We're very proud to be able to do that. You'll be hearing from uh, many of them as we progress through this award ceremony. We also like to recognize professionals in the community. And uh, this year, you know, we're very excited for the professional who has de devoted much of her life to kinship care. Um, and we're excited to do that. We have Outstanding Organization. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization in New York that provides support for kinship care and has, a, has had a significant positive impact uh, in the kinship community and a kinship champion, usually a state or national official or organization leader who has vigorously worked to help kinship families. You've just heard from three of the kinship champions uh, who are our speakers today, and we're really proud to have them here with us. So without further ado, I'd like to present the 2021 Kinship Cura Award 
uh, for kinship champion to Senator Roxanne Persaud. Uh, unfortunately, the Senator's not able to be with us today, but she did send some remarks that I will be playing. Um, but Senator Persaud was elected to the State Senate in November 2015 after having served as an assembly member. She serves as the chair of the Social Services Committee and in that role has been an excellent advocate for kinship issues. Dating back to 2019, she sponsored and helped pass a bill that would have fixed the child only grant uh, for issues that kinship caregivers face. That bill was vetoed by the governor. Um, we hope to come back to that. This year, she was the Senate sponsor of the bill, which is now law defining the term kinship caregiver with Assemblyman Andrew Hevesy, who you heard from earlier. We are very honored to have uh, Senator Persaud as an ally to kinship care. And uh, to accept her award, we'll be playing this short video. Hello, everyone. I'm State Senator Roxanne J. Persaud, representing the 19th Senate District, a district that covers approximately 20 neighborhoods in South and Southeast Brooklyn. I am the chairperson of the Social Services Committee and a member of multiple committees, including children and families and disabilities committees. Today, I'm unable to join you in person at this award ceremony because I am hosting a Senior Resource Day event, an event where local service providers, myself, my staff, offer resources to older New Yorkers, which gives them access to government and other much needed resources. The pandemic may have paused many activities, but we all know the need for resources has grown, particularly amongst our senior population and our youth. I'm humbled to be honored with a 2021 Cura Award from the New York State Kin Care Coalition. Thank you. It is always a pleasure to work alongside New York State Kinship Navigator and the Coalition on our common objectives to support kinship families and advocate for policies insistent changes. Your guidance and input to me have been invaluable. Again, thank you. I've had the privilege of championing the Kinship Care Coalition's bill. The bill that officially defines kinship caregiver and affirms the critical role that over 180,000 New Yorkers have in caring for a non-biological child, that child who is from their family or their community. Senate Bill 54 would not have become Chapter 246 without the tireless advocacy and tenacious organizing on your part. Assembly Member Hevesy, a previous Cure Award winner has been a tireless advocate for this legislation also. And he was a great partner until we got the legislation passed. We were ecstatic to have it signed into law permanently. Again, I thank you for honoring me today with the 2021 Cura Award. I look forward to continuing to work with you as we advocate for kinship care. It is my pleasure and my honor to be a voice for you in the New York State Senate and across New York State. Again, I appreciate all that you do in your advocacy for kinship families. We could not have done many of the things that we have done without your advocacy. So can we cheer on the kinship families that snap, that's clap, that's hoot? 
Let's thank you all for everything that you're doing. Without you, we do not know where our kids would be. Thank you. May you continue to be blessed and may your advocacy live on. I look forward to continuing to work with you in the New York State Senate. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And on behalf of the constituents of this 19th Senate District, I thank you again for this award. I accept it on behalf of all of the kinship families in my district. Thank you and have a great day. And we thank you so much, Senator Persaud, for being a champion to kinship care uh, and for your commitment to the kinship caregivers in your district and around the state. So congratulations to Senator Persaud on being our 2021 kinship champion. She joins a great group of folks, as you all have seen, uh, who have been our previous kinship champions, and we're excited to have her in our corner. So next up, we will be giving the uh, award for uh, organization, Outstanding Kinship Organization, and that goes to the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York. In 2016, OCFS launched the Regional Permanency Resource Center Initiative. You heard about that earlier from Ray. The coalition was one of 12 organizations chosen to initiate regional post-adoption and post-guardianship support programs. It was then that their AGAPE program came into being. By providing support services and connecting families to resources, such as parent trainings, support groups for both parents and youths, peer mentoring, navigation for cross-system needs, therapeutic services, referrals, counseling, or other supports to help families address issues as they arise, the Agape program helps post-adoptive, post-guardianship families through the unique challenges they face following an adoption or guardianship. AFFCNY has been a great partner to Kinship Care. They care a lot. Uh, about foster care. They care a lot about kinship caregivers. They operate a helpline 24-7 um, for, for all people who are caring for children. And they've been a great partner, um, both to the Kinship Navigator and part of the KinCare Coalition. And we're really honored to be able to uh, name them the Outstanding Kinship Program for 2021. And uh, Pat O'Brien is here uh, from the coalition and he's going to uh, give a few words. Pat, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I would just like to share what a gigantic honor it is for the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York to receive the Cura Award for Outstanding Organization from the New York State Kin Care Coalition. I want to personally uh, thank both uh, Ray Glasser and Ryan for their leadership on organizing this event. I'm so sorry we were not all able to be in person together today to share this wonderful experience. Um, the Adoptive and Foster Care Coalition of New York is committed to be part of family first effort going on in New York State right now. Preventing as many children from coming into foster care as possible by saying to it that their impacted parents receive the best quality community based services. And preferably not by the same state entity charged with removing their children in the first place. And for those children that must come into care on an emergency basis, the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York will always be dedicated to do our best to help those children go into homes of relatives and other kin who know and love them. Hopefully within 45 to 60 days of first coming into a home of a family who offered their household as an emergency placement for that very same child. So the coalition first and foremost wants all children to stay home with high quality, compassionate, responsive community-based services when they are needed. And only when that is not possible, we want all children to move in with trauma-informed kin caregivers who understand that raising children who they already know and love, but who might have had the lived experience of trauma and loss in their early life, will necessarily need different parenting strategies from the strategies that were utilized with their birth children, or even the strategies that their parents utilize when raising them. Teaching everyone trauma-informed therapeutic parenting is essential even when we already know and love the children who will be moving in with us. And through it all, the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York will be there to support all kinship, foster, adoptive families, 24 hours a day, every day of the week, for as long as those families need us. Once again, thank you so, so much for this incredible honor. 
And may I finally share my deep congratulations to Gerald Wallace. And I'm looking so forward to witnessing you receiving your Lifetime Achievement Award immediately following these awards. Thank you again so much. Thank you so much, Pat. AFFCNY is certainly uh, deserving of this award and we appreciate all that you and your, and your staff have done uh, to help kinship caregivers, help foster families, help adoptive families, help guardianship families. Uh, you guys have had a huge impact. Thank you so much for all the work you do. We are going to be moving on uh, and awarding the Outstanding Kinship Professional Award. And I'm really excited to do this award because uh, it's someone that uh, has been around since I've been around and much, and much uh, before that as well. It's Maria Gilborn of the Family Center. Um, she is an excellent, excellent advocate for kinship caregivers. She has been at the Family Center for 17 years as the director of the brand new caregiver program, uh, then as the director of social services, and currently as the deputy executive director for contracted services and special projects. She is recognized locally and throughout New York State as a fierce champion and advocate of caregivers and their children, and has contributed greatly to the development of comprehensive services addressing caregiver family needs for concrete goods and services, as well as the emotional and health uh, emotional health and well-being of all adults and children in caregiver-headed homes. Maria never turns away from a challenge and brings thoughtfulness and excellence to all she does. She is currently a member of the New York City HIV Planning Council and co-chairs the council's priority setting and resource allocation committee. For many years, she's, she has actively participated in the work of the New York City Kin Care Task Force, most recently serving as co-chair and is an active member of the New York State Kin Care Coalition. Um, Maria, the work you've done in kinship care is widely regarded. Um, you have been an excellent advocate. I've been able to work alongside you from a personal level uh, to be able to see the work you do and the care that you have for families and the interaction and uh, going the extra mile to make sure that uh, things are done, that caregivers' voices are heard and that uh, we really appreciate you for. So Maria, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a few words. Again, thank you and congratulations, Maria. Thank you so much, Ryan, and the rest of the Navigator team. It's really an, an honor and a pleasure to, to be here today and to accept this award. Um, as Ryan said, I've been at the Family Center for 17 years. I started there to oversee what was then a new DIFTA-funded project for kinship caregivers. And within the first two months of my employment, I was at what I think was the first New York State Kin Care Coalition Summit in the fall of 2004. Um, so met Jerry almost 17 years ago. Um, and for the last 17 years, it's been such a pleasure to, we were, as I said, we were funded first by the Department for the Aging and more recently for over a decade through New York State OCFS. Um, and I really wanna thank our government partners um, both the New York City Department for the Aging and OCFS for their incredible partnership and um, the staff at both of those organizations that have really championed um, this population and the, the needs of kinship caregivers. Working with kinship caregivers, most of whom are raising children in the aftermath of a traumatic loss or separation, and often also navigating other challenges related to financial strain, special needs, children, and also often our caregivers have health challenges of their own. Um, it's been truly inspirational to work with our consumers as well as all the amazing kinship um, advocates, many of whom I remember the last time we got to do this in person two years ago, um, honoring some of those amazing advocates. I see Granny Doris is on the call today. Uh, Linda James, Maria Lemons. Um, it's been amazing meeting with all of you and working side by side by, with all of you has been such a, a joy and an honor. Um, so in thinking about what to say today, I was reminded of the saying that 90% of life is just showing up and I feel like I'm getting an award for just showing up. <laughs> um, it's, it's been you know, it's been so easy to be a part of this because the work that under Jerry's leadership, the work that the, the Kin Care Coalition has done has been so effective. We've gotten so much done. Um, and sort of as assembly member Hevesy alluded to earlier, if you just kind of show up where, where Jerry says you should show up and sign what Jerry says you should sign, you're gonna be, uh, you know, 
in in a good place and doing good things and and more recent years following ryan's leadership has been terrific um so it's been such a pleasure for me to have an opportunity to really through just showing up um to actually affect systems change it's been very very exciting and satisfying um so I want to thank again, thank Jerry for his leadership, thank Ryan for your leadership and Ray as well, um, both on the policy side and on the direct service side, all three of you are tremendous champions for this population um, and have made this work um, even more satisfying than it would be if it was just the focus on direct service, being able to be involved in, in real policy change has been fantastic. So. Thank you very much. This is a pleasure and an honor, and I am delighted to accept the award. Thank you so much, Maria. And, you know, you've just been an excellent advocate for such a long time. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate you and are happy to honor you today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. I'm sorry, it's not my place to jump in at this portion of the program, but I also want to just offer my thanks for your contribution to Kinship Care. Um, I remember walking into the first OCFS meeting as the brand new Kinship Navigator back in 2007, and we got to see the uh, Renee Benson and Maria Gilborn, Deb Fox show, um, the 13 original OCFS Kinship funded programs, and it's been such an honor to work alongside you. Thank you for not only just showing up, but being an inspiration to all of the families and professionals that serve kinship caregivers. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Maria, and congratulations. We are going to be moving to uh, awarding some outstanding kinship caregivers. Ray alluded to how many kinship caregivers there are in New York State. You know, we're looking at um, so many children in kinship care, both in the formal foster care system, as well as outside, the majority falling outside, obviously. Um, so we wish we could honor them all, but we're really happy to be able to honor five different families here today as outstanding kinship caregivers. The first of which is going to be Kate and Dave Kruk. Um, Kate and Dave have been active members of the Kin Care Coalition since um, probably a year and a half ago but they've been caring for children for the last 12 years. They've served as kinship caregivers for their three nephews, uh, two of whom have diagnoses of autism. They're a strong voice for other families, as I mentioned, struggling to cope with the role of kinship caregiver as members of the coalition who are constantly, uh, you know, lending their voice to the cause. According to Dave about his wife, Kate, she has a superpower, the ability to fight tirelessly overcome terrible odds, surmount obstacles, and get incredible outcomes for disadvantaged kids. The Crux have pursued fair hearings on behalf of the children and are relentless about documenting the ways that agencies have failed to put permanency and best interests of their boys as a top priority. They've refused to give up and instead challenged the status quo in their never-ending battle to make it better for other families. We're, I, I personally am really honored to uh, know the crux and work alongside them to advance the cause of kinship care. Uh, so Kate, Dave, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you for a little bit. Uh, thank you, Ryan. And uh, thanks as well to Ray, Anthony, Assemblyman Hevesy, Senator Mayer, Senator Stuart Cousins, and everyone here in support of kinship caregivers. Kate and I are honored to accept the Cura Award today. Dave and I, again, we greatly appreciate this recognition and, and darling, that quote is that you're making me tear up. I had not seen that, so thank you. Um, as it sees, you can see in our bio here, uh, we've been kinship caregivers for our three nephews for nearly 12 years. It started when they were two, six, and eight, and now they are 13, 17, and 18. Uh, we are proud to be advocates for the positive change that we know will help others who have who take on a similar role in the future. Uh, and as you already know, uh, kinship caregivers are seldom prepared for the responsibility and challenges of helping children in crisis. In our case, we were balancing our careers, our expenses, and a son of our own when our family doubled in size overnight. Sadly, when we began this journey, we had very little guidance and very little sleep. Uh, we were directed by Schenectady County OCFS to file for temporary custody in family court. 
At that time, no one explained to us what kinship caregiving really was. Instead, we became a revolving door safe house for our nephews when my sister-in-law relapsed in her drug addiction or was unable, unable to manage her bipolar disorder. This happened multiple times over more than a decade. Kate and I have spent countless days in courthouses, taken leaves of absence from work, stagnated our career goals, and divided our family holidays. We didn't know how to protect ourselves from the dangerous elements that my sister had made a part of our lives. We filed for orders of protection, spent thousands in legal fees, installed new door locks on our house, and even put surveillance equipment on the house. Throughout all of this, our focus has always been to provide the best possible outcome for all of our boys. Over time, it became more apparent to us that the systems and agencies in place with that very same goal lacked the flexibility to provide the best outcomes, such as considering kinship families a viable option for permanency. Before being connected with the Kinship Navigator, we felt like we were the only ones struggling to adapt to this very complex situation. And now that we are aware, we are happy to lend our voices for the call to change. We are so glad to accept this award and will be even happier when kinship families gain access to quick, easy, and accurate support from the minute they step up to support the children they love and care for. Thank you all for acknowledging the value of our journey and your support of our family. And Ryan, thanks for reading that, that line I wrote because Kate isn't the type to embarrass easily, but uh, I think she was pretty touched. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you, darling. <laughs> Thank you both. Congratulations, your excellent voices for uh, your three nephews, as well as other kinship caregivers throughout the state. I'm, I'm personally really happy to be working alongside you as part of the coalition and really excited to see what great things can come, um, both from your experience and, uh, and, and you know, the life that you've lived. So thank you so much and congratulations, Kate and Dave. Thank you. Right back at you. We are moving on to our next outstanding kinship caregiver. And Senator Mayer already mentioned them. Uh, some caregivers from her district, Kathleen and Fano Coleman, they are raising three grandchildren, ages two, four, and six. The Colemans are use, uh, use their considerable experience to act as senior members of the kinship support group at Family Service Society of Yonkers, offering advice and support to other caregivers on both parenting issues and on navigating the foster care system. Mrs. Coleman has also been a riveting and compelling advocate for grandparents and relative caregivers by speaking about the needs of kinship families at Westchester County budget hearings. She and her husband believe more legal support is needed to ensure grandparents and other relative caregivers are not left out of the process as they were when a removal is indicated. Uh, you can see here there's a proclamation and recognition of uh, the Coleman's from uh, uh, Senator Stuart Cousins, the majority leader of the New York State Senate. So congratulations to both Kathleen and Faino. We'd be happy to hear from you now uh, for a few moments. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this award. It's an honor to be receiving this, this award. Our short, night, short version nightmare started in December of 2013 when Rockland County CPS took our three grandchildren and put them with a foster family without first trying to find family members to take care of them. After I shared, I searched and found out from Rockland County CPS where they were and what happened, they told us as grandparents, we have no rights, which we believed in the beginning. We were allowed supervised visits every two weeks for one and a half hours. These visits were agonizing because our grandchildren would always constantly ask why they couldn't come and live with us. We were told by Rockland County CPS that we would become foster parents by attending a foster care parent class. So we relieved them and completed all the class requirements from April to July of 2014. Upon finishing the classes, we were then again told that we were not qualified to become foster parents 
and were not even given a valid reason for their decision. This started our fight for our three grandchildren. It took a substantial amount of money and time to hire a lawyer to help us to fight for our rights in Rockland County Family Court. But we are happy to say that on May 8, 2015, we became the legal guardians of our three grandchildren. With our new formed family, I knew we would need help. So while searching online, I was directed to call Family Services of Yonkers Kinship Program. And then trying to navigate through the difficult and different situations to provide for my three grandchildren, we have been encouraged, supported, and even given extensive training from the Yonkers Kinship Program and their staff members. The program covers an array of subjects from everyday life to how to be able to handle different challenges that might come up in the children's lives. We talked about what children may need to be going, what children may be going through at different stages of their life, how to discipline children in a loving way, online schooling, and the list goes on. Every second Friday of the month, we look forward to the kinship support meeting. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the hard work that they put into uh, helping grandparents as well as families all over Westchester and dealing with the, um, the, the, the trauma that these kids go through. And we only can say the, the more support they are given, the better off the kids, children will be. And I myself would like to just thank everyone, especially the kinship program. Although it's a challenge to raise three uh, grandchildren They've made it easier and made it a joy. So I look forward and thank them for the programs. Thank you for the support. And we truly appreciate all the help that the Kinship of Yonkers has given us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your story is um, heart-wrenching, but I'm glad that it ended well. And so thank you for fighting for your grandchildren. Thank you for you know, going, going through what you went through to, uh, to raise them in your home. Uh, we know that they're they're really loved and cared for. So congratulations on being uh, given this award. We're we're really proud uh, to be able to do that. And thank you for all your advocacy um, on behalf of other families as well. We really appreciate you and congratulate you on this honor. We will be uh, moving on to our next outstanding kinship caregiver. We have three more. Uh, our next caregiver is uh, Ellen Early. Ellen is uh, a parent, a grandmother, a kinship caregiver, an advocate, and a supporter of kinship families. She also happens to work for the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York. Uh, she has been parenting her grandson for the past four years, Julian, age five. Uh, her commitment to the well-being of kinship families throughout New York State is profound. She's a member of the Parent Advisory Board for the New York State Office of Children and Family Services and helps to shape policy and practice in child welfare. She has been a featured panelist addressing kinship inequalities, legal options, and financial and social needs. She has also met with a New York State Senator regarding the needs of kinship families and the epidemic of loss due to opioid misuse. Ellen has also published an op-ed article, New York Should Place More Foster Children with Family Caregivers in a regional publication. Ellen's passion and compassion for families lead uh, to her work at the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition, where she supports stressed adoptive and guardianship families. Ellen, we're really happy to be able to give you this award, and we'd be really happy to hear from you now. Okay, I, I think I'm here. Oh, but there's no video. Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very honored and, and humbled to um, be able to be here uh, with all of you today. Um, and I'm going to, just to keep it short and on topic, I'm going to read directly my, um, my remarks. I want to thank you all for this award, and I think every parent at some point wishes for acknowledgement of the job they are doing raising their children. And I'm also so grateful for this acknowledgement and to represent kinship families in New York State. 
I want to dedicate this to all of the kinship families who are doing the extra complicated work of raising the children and trusting to us. Um, and I want to take just a moment to tell a little bit of my story, which unfortunately is no longer unique. My daughter Sage died three years ago from an overdose. She fought for sobriety for a year and a half before she died. And prior to her addiction consuming her life, she was an excellent mother to her son, Julian. She lived with me during her pregnancy, which was uneventful and peaceful. And she gave birth with myself and her siblings in attendance. And I've been there for Julian since his first breath. Sage was an incredible parent from day one. She nursed Julian and took care of his every need. She, he came first in her world and they were completely bonded. When, she, when he was 16 months old, she had her wisdom teeth removed and the dentist prescribed opioids. And within a month, addiction took over and she was gone from my home. As I mentioned, she fought hard to get back to Julian. After about two months in active addiction, she checked herself into a rehab and stayed for a year. She had a couple of relapses as is common with substance use disorder, but she was always fighting for sobriety. She came home and we had an amazing month together as a family. And after a one night relapse, she connected with another rehab program and was on her way to that program when she overdosed and died. I realized that I am fortunate that Julian has always been with me. For him, there was no transition to a new home or new faces. My role as Nana changed to parent when Sage left the first time. It was nothing I wanted, but something I knew I needed to do for Julian and even for Sage. I stepped into the role of parent so that she could find help in sobriety and so that Julian would have consistency. This is what we do as kinship parents. We let go of our dream of being a grandparent or an aunt or a cousin, and we become what our child needs us to be. It's a loss and I want to acknowledge that loss. Kinship parents give up being the fun person in our child's life. We have to grieve that loss along with the loss of our loved one, whether to death or to mental health issues, substance disorder, or whatever takes our loved one away from their child and their family. Our role as kinship parent is complicated. We love our family member who is the birth parent. Many times we raise them or were a significant person in their childhood. We remember them before their life became unstable or dangerous and it hurts us to see them suffering. When we are asked to take in their child, we do so with love for the person we knew them to be or wish they were. The complications happen when the birth parent sees us as barriers to their child. Because we have a relationship with them, it's personal. Resentments build and the child is caught in the middle. At the same time, we are tasked with overlooking the myriad of feelings we have, including anger, confusion, sadness, true grief, and loss. In our situation, we kinship parents grapple with the feeling of joy and happiness because it's not that simple. Yes, we rejoice when our, the children in our care succeed, but we also feel a depth of sadness that is indescribable because we wish so badly that their birth parent were there also to witness their child succeed. We kiss skin knees and patiently explain for the hundredth time why the sky is blue. We hold them when they're sick and stand proudly in the audience at every life milestone, taking pictures and clapping loudly, trying always to fill the space that the birth parent has left. Kinship parenthood is never planned. Not one of us could have foreseen this path when we were parenting our children. Kinship parenthood disrupts the dream we had for our own future, as well as what we wanted for our loved ones. We get the call that a child needs us and we answer without time or thought to how we will do it financially, emotionally, or physically. We say yes without any training, without support, and without an end date. We accept a 180 degree change in our lifestyle and we do it with love. We put our thoughts and feelings about the birth parent away so that we can fully hold the thoughts and feelings of the child who suffered the traumatic loss and help them cope. And make no mistake, the loss the child has suffered, whether permanent or temporary, will leave a lasting mark, unseen but also visible. Visible in their behavior, their relationships, and their physical health. As kinship parents, we hold space for our, ch our children to grieve and rage and ask the hard questions. As kinship parents, we are keenly aware of how we have to do things differently. We are well aware of the mistakes we may have made the first time around, as well as the unique needs of the child in our care. Second time parenthood is a double-edged sword. All of the things we wish we knew when we were first time parents, we now know, including the reality that no matter how good or right you think you did it, there are no guarantees. Kinship parents are the embodiment of unconditional love. We are not heroes or failures or anything other than people who love so greatly that we accept the responsibility of trying again for the sake of a child who needs us. We need support in our journey. We need education and advocacy on every level. 
We need to lessen the stigma around kinship parenting and for society to recognize that our family unit is a typical family unit. We should not be ostracized or invalidated because of the circumstances that formed our family. We need financial help and recognition that what we are doing is to the benefit of not just the child in our care, but also to our community. I wanna thank AFFCNY for the support and understanding they have given me and my family on this journey. The organization truly lives their mission of family is the most important thing, and I'm honored to be a part of that mission. As an employee, I have been supported always in putting my family first. Having every coworker, supervisor, and even our executive director experienced in some aspect of adoption, foster, and kinship care really deepens the understanding of what our families need. I want to thank you again for this recognition, and I appreciate this award and the understanding behind it, and I share this achievement with every kinship family in New York State. Thank you. Ellen, thank you so much. Uh, your story, obviously, extremely compelling. And uh, we really are honored to be able to uh, give you this award uh, and appreciate all that you are doing to advance the cause of kinship care, uh, both in your personal and professional life. So thank you so much. We're honored to be able to give you uh, this award and congratulations. Moving to our next family, uh, our next caregiver, I should say, um, is John Medina. Uh, Mr. Medina is raising his two grandchildren, Brianna and Williams Lee. Because uh, uh, both Mr. Medina, both grandchildren are living in a stable and loving environment. Brianna is no longer afraid of the dark and her speech is better than ever. While he knows that they have a long way to go, his ability to advocate for resources transparency, support systems, and boldness to articulate the needs as a caregiver to elected officials, community leaders, and the community at large will help to sustain his family. Mr. Medina was one of the first to participate in the Grandparent Resource Center's Virtual Empowerment Series research-based program. It was the first of its kind conducted by Fordham University Graduate School of Social Service and quickly became a spokesperson in promoting the positive impact of the program, especially during COVID. He was featured in Bronx Channel 12 News and on panels discussing and raising awareness of kinship caregivers and their need for supportive services. So Mr. Medina, we're happy to uh, give you this award and we'd love to hear from you right now. Hi everybody, um, distinguished guests. Uh, thank you everybody for being here this morning. Uh, I'm a little choked up because uh, a lot of us suffered through a lot during this pandemic. I would like to humbly thank everyone at the New York State Kinship Navigator and Kin Care Coalition for this Caregivers Award and the New York City Department for the Aging for their nomination. This award represents all caregivers everywhere who sacrifice each day, overcoming enormous obstacles to raise grandchildren and children in foster care. Please be aware that sometimes caregivers get so involved nurturing others, we forget our own health. I encourage caregivers to please take care of your own needs. We must stay strong in order to provide for others or our families will suffer. I personally have to point out that Department for Aging, Grandparent Resource Center, the director, Helen Flowers, and community advocate, Antoinette Emmers, along with the amazing staff, contributed greatly to providing services and resources to me and others during critical times in my life amidst the pandemic. When many of us caregivers were feeling hopeless and deep depression set in, Department for the Aging gave us a lifeline to recover. Example of this is the virtual empowerment series by Professor Carol Cox, Fordham University, Graduate School of Social Service. She's an immense supporter to the Grandparent Resource Center the seven week sessions gave us caregivers uh, confidence and empower us to take on all the challenges in our way. 
gave us a voice to advocate for ourselves and our family. Uh, increased our expansion and knowledge of technology because a lot of us needed uh, instruction on how to use the computer, internet, and navigate resources during the pandemic. Uh, I just really want to say that in closing, I'd like to extend my deepest appreciation to all the hardworking seniors and caregivers who give up themselves every day every day to care for their loved ones. Special thanks to the Grandparent Resource Center for reaching out to help us with our needs. I'm a disabled veteran, First Cavalry Army. Uh, my brothers came back from Afghanistan. I was in Iraq. I thought that was tough. This is tougher, much harder. But the reward at the end of the day, sometimes I feel like giving up. It's when the children say, I love you, I feel safe, and I'm home. Instead of being some far place abandoned or with strangers or being abused or forgotten. Anyway, uh, thanks for this award. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, John. I'm sure there's not very many dry eyes uh, in, in these rooms right now. Um, we appreciate the commitment and sacrifices that you have made um, and overcoming the obstacles that, that you've experienced to raise your two grandchildren. Um, we thank you and we're honored to be able to give you uh, this recognition. So congratulations. Our uh, final caregiver award uh, today goes to Doris Lewis. Ms. Lewis has been a caregiver to her 16 year old grandson, Jordan, since 2012. She has raised her grandson Jordan to be a gentleman, and he certainly takes after his grandmother with his willingness to help his community. He attends the Eagle Academy for Young Men at Ocean Hill, a great college prep school that's primary focus is to develop young men in the pursuit of academic excellence, build strong character, and responsible leadership. Ms. Lewis retired from serving as a caseworker for Adult Protective Services in 2017, where she helped clients who were not able to care for themselves receive services to better their lives. She is also a leader in her church, the Christian Cultural Center, where she troubleshoots any issues that arise and helps the community to have a great place to worship. She is also, uh, she is also has shown cultural pride in her community and knits and sews hats, scarves, and Afrocentric clothing that she gives to her community. Ms. Lewis, we're happy to be able to give you this award today, and we'd be happy to be able to hear from you now. I just Good afternoon, everyone. And I'd just like to say that I'm humbled and honored to receive such a high recognition. Um, I thank you. However, I've had a lot of help, a lot of support from Ms. Brandy and Mr. Frank McRae. Um, they've been so supportive um, from anything that we needed. You know, I can always go to them um, to gain information. Um, we, I'm grateful, we're grateful for all the resources that have been provided to us. Thank you again, I deeply appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for your grandson and for your community. We're really happy to be able to give you this award today. Uh, and congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our CURA awardees this year. Thank you for all of you in the community who nominated uh, folks for this consideration. Um, we're really happy to be able to uh, honor people in this way. So again, thank you so much. I'll be turning it back over to uh, our director, Ray Glazer. Ray? Thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you to all of our caregivers today. 
Um, your stories are inspiring. Um, as Ryan said earlier, there's not very many dry eyes in the room or any of these rooms right now. Um, it's always absolutely amazing to hear from all of our caregivers, their stories, their resiliency, their strength. Very inspiring and really what today is all about. Um, also equally wonderful to hear from our professionals, from Mario Gilborn, from AFFCNY. Um, it, it's truly special to hear about the kinship professionals that serve these caregivers day in and day out. Uh, we always wish that we could recognize everybody, um, but every single year hearing from those in the field, hearing from our kinship caregivers is truly inspiring. So Thank you very much. Congratulations to all this year's Kira awardees. Uh, we salute you, we tip our hats to you and keep on your amazing work. At this point in time in the program, we're gonna turn it over to a brand new award, our Lifetime Achievement Award. And this one is in a category all by itself. Um, we thought we were teary before. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get through the next half an hour, but I'm gonna do my very best. So bear with me here. At this point in time, we want to recognize and honor uh, the New York State Kinship Na Caregivers, uh, New York State Kinship Navigators founding director, Jerry Wallace, um, or Gerard Wallace Esquire, if we are being very professional, which usually we know that Jerry was not. So we're going to refer to him as Jerry for the next half an hour. Um, we've got a little bit of information about Jerry. Uh, most of us know him very well that are on this presentation today, but Jerry's been serving kinship caregivers since 1997. He founded the New York State Kinship Navigator Program. He was our director from 2006 until 2020, and he is the recipient of so many awards that I can't even begin to count them. Um, we've got some information here on our slide. There's more information on his bio on our homepage. Um, really, his excellence to kinship care is unparalleled. Today, really, is about those awards and about um, all of his contributions to kinship care, but it's really about Jerry as the person. Um, I have the honor to be giving some opening remarks about uh, the presentation of this Lifetime Achievement Award. We're then gonna turn it over to a video tribute that everybody's helped put together and then hear from Jerry himself. Um, this one was tough for me. Uh, as many of you know, I am the program person at The Navigator. It's not really my forte to do public speaking, um, but as the person that's worked very closely with Jerry for the last 14 years, um, I wanted to be the one to give the remarks today. I've sat down so many times to write out my remarks about what I wanted to say as a colleague of Jerry's, as a friend, uh, as his first kinship specialist at the Navigator, or somebody that has really stepped into some very large shoes to fill as the new director of the Navigator. And whenever I would sit down to write the words, none of it seemed right. Um, I would chronicle all of Jerry's awards, of his publications, of his history, his rise into kinship care uh, at Hunter College, AARP, as the founding director of the Navigator. It's an impressive history, um, and I could actually spend my full time talking about it today, but that's not why we're here. I would think about my history of working with Jerry at the Navigator, uh, the many times that we would take the dog and pony show out on the road, Jerry from Albany, me from Rochester, and I would watch him speak, uh, expressing his vast knowledge and infinite wisdom that he brought to kinship care issues. I would think about the laws that he helped get passed in New York of the influence in the state legislature and the reaches of the cause nationally to Washington, DC, advocating for the importance of kinship care, uh, grand rallies, so many conferences and kinship care month over the years. He brought the Navigator to life in 2006, making it one of the most successful programs in the country and bringing in more dollars for kinship care than the state has ever seen. That's all amazing, but it's not what makes Jerry so special. When I think about Jerry, I think about the grandma from Yonkers that said, what are you talking about? All of our kids are special. It's a statement that was made years ago and something that stuck with me because it's so Jerry. To him, everyone was special. Every single caregiver, child, colleague, and professional, we are all special to him. 
I think about his following of caregivers that would hang the sun and the moon for what passion he evoked in them, and his staunch belief that kinship care was truly a natural resource that Annie M. knows best, and all of his references to George Washington, the father of our country, and also a kinship caregiver. I think about the thousands of caregivers he's spoken with, had coffee with, and run around the Capitol with to get their voices heard, each with their special and unique stories. I think about his reach, of course. He is without a doubt someone that everyone would say was an important figure in kinship care, both around the state and the country. It always blew me away, the cachet that he had with so many high-level movers and shakers. It also occurred to me that he really wouldn't hesitate to show up at these meetings and beat up loafers, drop a four-letter word to get his point across and cut right to the chase, while somehow losing two out of three of the papers that he had to get his point across, which with perfect hindsight, he never really needed any of those papers anyways. His passion and belief in the words that he was speaking were enough to convince anyone to do exactly what he was asking. I think about his colleagues and his team along the way. As I had a passenger seat to watching all the people he interacted with at Kinship Care, at OCFS, local kinship programs, so many human service agencies, I watched as he worked with them, interacting specifically to tailor their personalities to come together with something amazing. I look at the Kinship Navigator team as he built it out, the knack that he had for spotting talent and cultivating exactly where it was needed most. And then I think about the 23 year old kid, nearly right out of college, who had absolutely no idea what kinship care was. After three months of working at the freshly minted Navigator program, having the naivete to utter, is that my job? We won't talk about what he asked me to do. Um, but since we can, it involved laundry. And yes, I, I did it for him. Jerry taught me so many things along the way. He taught me how to navigate a map pre-smartphone on the days when he got detoured doing presentations. There was one time when he did a presentation in Utica and the throughway was closed. So he called the navigator to find his way back home. Hey, I was the navigator at the time. So this time it truly was my job. He taught me the importance of good subject lines, how to speak candidly yet professionally, and how a good document is read not once, twice, but five times. Sorry, Navigator team, that did come from somewhere, and we do continue that on to this day. He taught me how to treat a team, not as staff, but a team, how to create an environment of cohesiveness and acceptance and humanity. He also taught me that the team was what made the navigator so powerful. It wasn't Jerry's program. It wasn't my program. It was the unity of the whole team that made something amazing happen. He taught me how to see the best in people and also how to show compassion and empathy both in the population that we serve and those who serve them. He also did teach me how to find those two pieces of paper that he lost during the presentation for the very important people. I'm kidding. That was me who figured that one out. But you know, somebody had to manage the great man from time to time. All of those would be great things, but Jerry evoked in me what I know he evoked in every single person at this gathering and every person who was lucky enough to cross his path. And that was passion. He moved forward at full speed with the conviction of a person who believes 100% in his cause and his infectious spirit brought it out in every single person around him. And that's greatness. That's a lifetime achievement that we all aspire to. This is the part where I'm a little bit glad that I'm giving these remarks virtually. The impact that Jerry had on me personally and all of us, it's sad to see that day to day end. As Maria said earlier, we follow Jerry and great things happened. What we didn't realize is that by following Jerry, we did more than just show up. We learned by greatness and undoubtedly continued down the path that Jerry paid for us to further the cause of kinship care. I also know that if I was in front of you giving these remarks and getting teary as I am right now, 
Jerry would undoubtedly lighten the mood with some of his famous one-liners and call me ridiculous with his Three Stooges voice. Or, in the words of some of his favorite tunage, would remind me that, oh, blah, dee, oh, blah, da, life goes on. And it does. With the pathway that you've laid for the navigator, for the New York State Kinship System of Care, and for caregivers nationally, it does go on. With your amazing influence and pilgrimage, we continue it and we go on. Thank you is not adequate, but the thanks is there with all of our hearts. And now a tribute to Jerry Wise. Thank you. Ray, if I can just uh, say thank you for those words. I want to quickly, you know, acknowledge that Senator Stuart Cousins uh, did issue a proclamation in recognition of uh, Jerry and all of his accomplishments. Um, and, and, you know, there are some comments here from Sally, the vice president, and from me, uh, Tashi Delhi, commander. Uh, I will, we, we can pass this along to you after, but we wanted to uh, make sure that you knew that uh, we here at the Navigator and Catholic Family Center really care about you and love you very much, Jerry, and appreciate all that you've done to um, make us disciples of kinship care. And so uh, as you sail off into the sunset, as you say, uh, we hope that this video uh, honors you. Hi, Jerry. I am so happy to be joining in your much-deserved celebration today. 
There's no one more deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award for your tireless and spirited advocacy on behalf of kinship caregivers in New York and those across the nation. You rightfully commanded attention and focus on many issues related to the challenges and needs faced by our kinship caregivers. You made sure that OCFS was accountable, and as a result of your tenacious commitment, we have many accomplishments to celebrate together. You are so respected, beloved by the caregivers and staff to whom you've devoted your career, and you will always be remembered as a fearless, compassionate, and determined advocate. Jerry, I wish you good health, good luck, and most of all, I offer my deep respect for your legacy contributions to this work. Take care. Hi, my name is Greg Olson. I'm the director of the New York State Office for Aging. I was absolutely honored and pleased to be asked to say some words on behalf of my friend and colleague, Jerry Wallace, uh, who has retired and just want to wish him the best. I'm, I'm really so proud of him and, and really happy for him. So I met Jerry in the early 90s when I was working at Statewide Senior Action Council. We had a little office in a church uh, right beyond the Capitol about a block away. And I met Jerry then, uh, he's an amazing human being, uh, really liked him as a person, um, loved him as a lawyer. Uh, his commitment to families, especially in the, in the kinship realm, um, was immediate and we became friends immediately. Um, it was at the same time also that he adopted his beautiful daughter from China. And so to watch her grow up through the Christmas cards uh, that I got, or I'd see him at a restaurant, um, I wonder where the time has gone. But it's been an absolute joy and pleasure to, to know Jerry, uh, to work with Jerry. He's always been a huge asset, always proactive, always trying to connect the dots, whether or not uh, the areas that he was working in in the state uh, were the same areas that we were working in, was always looking to expand the envelope to help caregivers, to help families. And he's done all of that. The legacy that he has built, the organization that he has built, and we worked on a little of that together to get the Kinship Navigator uh, through statute and to develop some of those programs when I worked in the assembly. Um, is really a long lasting legacy to uh, the man and the professional uh, Jerry Wallace. So there's a lot that I could say, but I just want to say sincerely to you, Jerry, um, what an amazing person you are, um, what an amazing colleague you have been, and what an incredible advocate for families of all ages, not only in New York State, but at the national level. So. Happy retirement. I know whatever you're going to do in your encore career, you're going to be very, very busy. And uh, I'm really happy for you, buddy. So have a great retirement and uh, we'll, we'll talk soon. Great, thank you. At this point, we'd like to turn it over to Jerry to offer some remarks. The floor is yours, Commander. Well, I've always had an interest in being melodramatic. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my glasses off and wipe my eyes because I've been crying. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I appreciate because those tears come from love and expressed to me today and my love back to everyone here. Um, the miracle is the kinship caregivers, as John Medina said. The miracle is him and the other folks here that you've witnessed today and what they do for caregivers. Um, we couldn't be more fortunate to have such wonderful people. I coined the phrase years ago, a national resource they truly are. And all the children that get into their care are so fortunate for them and what they do. I, I have some remarks, but now I gotta put my glasses back on to read them. So give me just a second, okay? All right, all right then. Um, Okay, so my remarks are casual. I've always been known to be casual. And I wanna start though with some thank yous. I have to begin with Ray Glazer to organize this event today and such a, said such beautiful things about me. And uh, I was really praying she wouldn't say all the awful things she knew about me and she managed to avoid that. So <laughs> thank you, Ray, for doing the good side of the coin, okay? She knows a little bit about my temper too. So we, we're not gonna go there. Um, 
Ryan too, who came on later and has been marvelous. And I am so lucky, you know, I'm 73 now. And so it was time for the whippersnappers to get their chance. And uh, really, really, they have so much uh, energy and passion and the ability to get it done. It was time for me to step aside and just hand the reins to this marvelous um, team and, and get going. And I really wish them all the best and appreciate. Now, the good news is that I have a little more time than I expected. The bad news is you might have to listen to me a little longer than you expected. Well, that's not unusual, okay? So um, I'm going to try and glance down at these formal kind of high points I wanted to say, Ryan and Ray. The Kin Care Coalition over the years, sometimes we've had more, sometimes we have had less. We used to have... Um, media meetings uh, hosted by AARP. AARP has been our great friend, but all the members of the coalition, and I go back to the early 2000s with the coalition when Beth Finkel and I at AARP founded it, and so many marvelous people. Many of them are not on this call, and if I have a little time towards the end, I'm going to go through some names. Uh, you folks who are newer and won't know them, but I feel I really need to say thanks for the memories to so many folks who have been my partners in this endeavor. The coalition is great. The Kinship Navigator has really performed marvelously. And Ray um, didn't really say it, but you know she let me run around like a crazy person while she held down the fort. And truly, 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 if I couldn't have done it without Ray, who uh, tolerated me and made the wheels turn as I got out there and did my best to break them. So thank you, Ray, so much. Uh, and then um, Catholic Family Center itself and Sally Partner, who sent remarks, who was our, um, our administrator. Um, Catholic Family Center was named by the New York State Legislature when Greg Olson and the other person was Kristen Sinclair in the Senate for Senator Myers and acted legislation in 2004 that created the Navigator. And they actually came to me and said, where do you want this to be? And I chose Catholic Family Center up in Rochester because they already had a marvelous kinship program. And I'm sorry, New York City, I came out of the Hunter College Grandparent Caregiver Law Center. I didn't want it to be New York City based because New York is a big state and all those caregivers in Chautauqua and um, God knows places that a guy from Brooklyn can't even say, those places, they needed to be represented also. And uh, the only way we were gonna do that is to get the game out of New York and really cover the entire state. So Catholic Family Center, which gave me free reign <clears throat> and never really came down to me administratively and let me do what I wanted to do. Thank you. I think we got results and uh, your goodwill and confidence in letting me do that is much appreciated. Well, we began the day with some wonderful legislators and uh, Andrew Hevesy spoke first and Andrew is now our current assembly champion and a marvelous person who, when he discovered kinship care, as he said, jumped in, uh, dove in, I should say, and is really leading the charge. And we hope he will for years and years to come. And uh, I don't think there's anything Andrew Hevesy can't do when he puts his mind to it. So we're very fortunate to have him. Shelly Mayer got on board early on with the help of her Yonkers crew and has been there steadily growing the um, uh, recognition of kinship care. The kinship care September is kinship care month. Um, uh, voicing that legislature, and now as a senator working to get us the funding that we need. Thank you, Shelley, and I know you'll be there too. And senator Andrew Stewart Cousins, I met many, many years ago, close to 20 years ago, uh, in Yonkers, because she was always showing up to the kinship events in Yonkers, where she was then the um, the representative, and uh, I, I re immediately recognized the genuineness and the emotional breath of Stuart Cousins. And she continues to be that person today. And I did not expect to get this little proclamation. I am particularly touched by that. I know how much she has passed through Travals and I appreciate her greatly as a person. That's just getting started folks, okay? Um, so the champions today, Senator Prasad has come on in the past few years in the Senate as the uh, chair of uh, the Social Services Committee. Um, co-sponsored the kinship caregiver definition, which is just a paramount bill that will lead to much more legislative help and regulatory and policy help on the, for our families. Thank you, Senator, for your leadership. The agency, the Adoption and Foster Family uh, Coalition of New York, 
I remember going back 15, 20 years being at their statewide conferences, and I knew then how committed they were. And through changes of leadership, every one of their leaders has been just a great force for good, and they do great work. Marvelous, marvelous folks. Thank you. Now, Myra Gilborn. Well, we heard a lot about Myra, 17 years. Hmm, she's my junior. Um, but my thought of Myra and the thing that I remember in my mind, the image of her is getting off a bus in Washington, D.C. that she had shared to bring down a busload of caregivers to one of the early grand uh, rallies, probably like in 2004 or five, Myra. And that was a long trip. Multiple stops along the way, uh, sweat and tears, uh, bathroom breaks, not enough food, a bunch of caregivers, honorary caregivers to care for on a bus. Myra, you know, and all those caregivers love you dearly. And that was above and beyond. And you continue to do that throughout your career. Um, the community will miss you, but go on and whatever you do, the goodness and fervor that you bring to it and, and the intelligence um, is just uh, bar none. Really great to hear from you, Myra, and for you to get that, this award today. Now we've got the caregivers. Now, the caregivers today, I don't know personally, because two years ago and at the last in-person event, that was kind of my swan song. And I sailed off into the distance when my knees decided to go and really have uh, turned the, uh, the ship's captaincy over to Ray since then. And she's done a marvelous job. But I want to make a few comments on what they said and then go on to what I wanted to say about kinship care. Um, Kate and Dave, marvelous and uh, inspiring. And the thing that I just want to point out about Kate and Dave is they're not grandparents. They're an aunt and uncle. And it's really important to recognize that not all kinship care is grandparents. We have the Grandparent Resource Center in, D in New York. I ran the Grandparent Caregiver Law Center at Hunter College in New York in the late 90s. Back then, grandparents were synonymous with what came to be known as kinship care. But in 2004, at the conference that Myra mentioned, when she said that she came up to Albany for the first statewide summit, which actually was the second one, but that was the first one hosted by AARP. I got up and started talking about grandparent caregivers and a gentleman got up in the audience and raised his hand and said, I really am pained by this because I'm an uncle caring for my niece. And I've never again wanted to go without associating kinship care with all the aunts and uncles, the family friends, the adult children, the great grandparents, the great aunts and uncles who have done this job, always in the same um, way that everyone else has done it unconditionally. And so it is just marvelous that finally we have a definition of kinship care in New York that includes all of them. And I salute that man, I don't remember his name back in 2004, for admonishing me and telling me, get on with it. All of us aunts and uncles need to be remembered too. Okay. Um, Kathleen and Fino Coleman, you said something that really goes back far in my history, and I'm getting a chance to talk about that. When I was at Hunter College, it was the era of grandparent caregiving. I, came, I ran the Grandparent Caregiver Law Center, and it was a common question. I'm a grandparent. What are my rights? And you said you were told by Rockland County you didn't have any rights. Well, yes, that's true, but you have a little more rights now than you did way back in 1999. And, part, and that's due to the work that we all did together in the state to give you more rights. There's a long road to go, but grandparents' rights have gotten better, and your core question still needs to be answered more completely through the advocacy that we're doing and future people will do. Um, Ellen, you're a grandma. Your daughter will succumb to the opioids. What a terrible story how common it is for our um, kinship navigator folks and all the kinship service providers to hear this. It's heartbreaking. And our, my solace out to you and my love to you dearly for the pain that you've had to suffer. I'm so sorry, okay? John, a vet, congratulations, sir. My, I salute you and I appreciate what you've done and there being a grandma, grandfather and taking on that child, your heart came through. You are just the best of the best and you emulate what all our caregivers are. Congratulations, John. Please uh, know that this award is just a token of what you go through every day. Bravo, John, okay? And Dora Lewis, um, kinship caregiver, 
Um, your story is what I thought when I heard it was, oh my God, this is the typical kinship care story. I don't mean to mean that as a way to diminish it. What I mean to raise it up to say that you and an army of other caregivers across the country have gone through this, not just in New York State, and you are doing the great job and the great work that needs to be done. And my love to you and to all of the awardees. Now, I've got about 10 minutes, and then that'll give Kay, Ray still plenty of time for the uh, major presentation. So please put up with me a little bit longer. This is, after all, the last time you'll ever hear from me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, Lord, that's a hard one to say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you knew we were going to build in more than 10 minutes. Of course. Well, hours, right? yeah, I got lucky, okay? I got lucky, okay? Um, I've talked to over 10,000 kinship caregivers, and uh, most of them in person because I've traveled a lot, and it's been a long time. It's uh, 96 or 97 that I, I met my first caregivers actually in 96. One was um, at the Office for the Aging, and she was a secretary there, and she said, "I, uh, I'm a kinship, I'm a grandma, and I'm taking care of my grandchild. I have guardianship. The mother signed a paper giving me guardianship. Well, the fact of the matter is that paper had no legal weight. The second grandma I met was in Rensselaer across the river from Albany, and she said, CPS gave me my grandchild and told me to go get custody. I did that, and then when I asked them for help, they said they didn't have to help me because it wasn't their job. Oh, does that ring a bell with anybody out there? Okay, so two, two caregivers, two unresolved legal issues, and it, I recognize that kinship care had a long way to go before we got to what I've been proposing for 20 years and have lectured on all around the country, a kinship family right to care. Kinship caregivers are part of a family. Them and the children they care for are a family, and they should be empowered with all the rights and services that a family needs to get the job done. And, you know, there's a three-hour legal lecture around this notion, but let's just say it goes beyond being a tool or uh, a useful tool for the Department of Social Services. Kinship families need to be empowered with their rights. The rights involve making sure that they can keep the kids, that they can get the kids, that they can get the child into school, that they can get the help they need, and that they can get legal assistance when they need it. And there's a whole host of other issues we won't trouble you with now, but I would appreciate that. I know Ryan knows it well. A kinship family right to care is kind of the emblematic expression that I've come to conclude really needs to be accomplished, okay? Uh, Ray did a great job of mentioning some of the, uh, the Nas National Kinship Care Month in New York. I just wanted to make one note that the United States Senate has since 2015 had our work, uh, the Kinship Navigators work really, um, proclaimed in September National Kinship Care Month. And Congresswoman Bass in the, uh, the House has done that, Senator Wyden in the Senate many, almost every year, Bass some years. September is a tough month because they come back for the budget and they're all out of their minds with uh, uh, all these different conflicting interests and advocacy groups. So I hope that Senator Wyden will come through again this year and we will have another proclamation of uh, National Kinship Care Month. Um, back, in, back since 1996, when I published my first monograph onwards, I've published over a hundred articles, monographs, um, written hearings, uh, memos, whatever you want to say, and done a lot of speaking. But one thing that I looked for this morning was a phrase that rung in my head. And back in 2001, I got an op-ed in the Albany Times Union that was entitled, Children from Broken Homes Don't Have to Lead Broken Lives. I believe that to this day. It's not exactly a slogan that uh, trips off the tongue, but I believe that every caregiver who takes in a child from a broken home, and the reasons for those broken homes are myriad and almost entirely awful, gives them a chance not to have a broken life. What more could you do in your life? So having interviewed those caregivers and recognized the work they've done along that theme, I have never been able to move away one iota from wanting to serve you because you are the best of the best. The kinship community is uh, 
Unconditional love has been said a few times. Faultless in their commitment. We're all human. We've all got our strong suits and weak suits. And you can be a real jerk at 20. And I was a jerk at 20 and a really great person at 40. And so many of you have turned that corner and are. I just, from the bottom of my heart, I got to say. So a couple more remarks, Ray. I know you're counting the clock. <laughs> um, toxic stress. Everyone talks about trauma. But to me, toxic stress is really not to be forgotten. Sometimes it's, uh, it's, there's an ampersand there and they say trauma and toxic stress. I came from a broken home. My father was a drunk. He abused my mother. And when I got out of college in 70, I was supposed to go to law school. I didn't get there to 92 because I went off the deep end and I have the seventies, I would call my dark episode. We don't need to go there, but there's a lot of stories that should never be spoken again, okay? And I survived them. And I survived them because uh, my brother and sister who really had different lives than I didn't abandon me. And I survived them because I met the Kazi family and the Kazi family are from um, Tibet and uh, Sikkim. And they took me under their wing and told me that I could, I could pull out of the downward spiral I was in. And they taught me how to be more compassionate, more courageous, and more inclusive of those around me. And I thank them to this day. And I know they're on this call. My deep appreciation to them. <clears throat> I got into kinship care <clears throat> because in my second marriage, I met this wonderful woman. You saw her picture. <clears throat> Karen Wallace, she's going to lean in here now and say hello. There's Karen. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> and I wanted her to speak for half an hour, but she said no, she wouldn't. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Karen uh, was a physical therapist. I met her luckily in 91. And she said, well, why don't you go to law school? You were supposed to do it back then before my life got derailed. I had some good jobs in the 80s, but... I was still searching. I went to law school, got a fellowship at Albany Law, and the Government Law Center gave it to me. And Patty Selkin, then director, said to me, why don't you do grandparents raising grandchildren? There's a long history around that. So my next person I want to acknowledge is Patty Selkin, who's now the provost of Troy Law School. Going to go fast now through some of these folks and, and try and say a few things about them, and then I know I'm going to get cut off. So I'm, uh, Rosemary Bailey at the law school taught me how to write. I hadn't been in school for 23 years, and uh, my idea of a sentence was really, uh, it got redlined. And she taught me, and I got my first monograph out with her help, and Rosemary continues to be a friend and advisor on kinship care. Uh, I mentioned my wife, and you saw pictures of this little young, this little girl in some of the, some of the frames. Well, now that little girl is 21 and has turned into an inspiration for me because she is independent, strong, marvelous, knows what she wants to do, and has such compassion that just yesterday, the caregiver program she's volunteering for, asked her to intern and said, there's no one knows how to work with the aging like you. So Katie Wallace, my, uh, my continuing inspiration, you go girl and have a great life, okay? Um, I think I could say many other people, I'm into my last page of this, I'm gonna go quickly. I mentioned Beth Finkel. Uh, I'd like, I've mentioned Ryan, I, I'd like to mention some of the caregiver service providers that really stepped up to the plate in advocacy over the years. Denise Ferriano from Cornell Cooperative, Renee Benson lives down in Maryland now, uh, Deb Fawkes who might be on the line, Kate Hacker who retired years ago, Myra you're here, Deb Langosh out of Brooklyn has uh, left us now and retired and there are so many others. And of the caregivers in 2019 we celebrated some of them. Bridget Castellano, Linda James, Doris Williams, Cindy Fountain, Jeff and Cindy are on the line today, Gloria Woods, Maggie Lee, our deceased beautiful friend Maria Lemons, and many others. Um, in our advocacy, besides ARP New York's Beth Finkel, Dave McNally, Bill Farris, Susan Antos at the Empire uh, Justice Center, just an incredible advocate for children. They should build a statue to Susan in Albany. Dr. Lee, thank you for the work you've done in publishing and uh, raising awareness in government. There's a whole host of staffers. I'm not going to go into their names now. I want to give Ray time. But the staffers are the key. You talk to the staffers more than you talk to the legislators. If they become your advocate, 
you have won the race. And those staffers, beginning with Tina Marlowe, Sinaya Metzger, this is 2000 and 2003, um, many, many others, Kristen Sinclair, and others coming forward into the modern era, so to speak. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, lastly, at OCFS Commissioner Poole, yes, you have been a partner and an advocate, but I, you know that I know that more needs to be done and you'll be hearing about it, okay? Um, also at OCFS, particularly Carol McCarthy, who runs the Kinship programs now, really a friend to those programs. Bob Resnick in the past, who just became a friend and a great advocate at OCFS for Kinship Programming. Um, and Patty Selk and uh, Patty Bryan, who's now passed away. I could go on. I've done it. I want to just say in closing, I don't have any regrets except one. There's more to be done. And what needs to be done does it, has to go on. And I know the staff that I'm leaving behind wants to do it. But since if any of the legislators are left out there, get them legal assistance. Shore up the problems with public assistance that keeps grandma from getting a full grant if she takes a child in. Make sure they can get children enrolled in school and redefine a person in parental relationship. Um, at OCFS, stop the nonsense with safety plans and get these children and their caregivers the help they need. That's just a few folks. Um, the, the, the fight never ends. Go on. Love you all. Thank you so much for the award. And Ray, I saved you a couple of minutes, okay? All right. All the best, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much. You know, with all sincerity, uh, the fight does go on, and we are there for it. You cultivated a great community of advocates, kinship caregivers, people that are very passionate about the cause, and we will continue onward, Commander, with the great work that you've laid down for us. So thank you for that. Um, in a moment of brevity, before we turn it over to our next portion of the program, it is 1257. So Jerry, by my clock, you are actually three minutes early. Wait, 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 I have more to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, go ahead. Oh, I have a true confession for the last two minutes of this program, and I don't think Jerry even was aware of this. When I was first hired at the Navigator program, um, I worked for Jerry and also a woman named Mary Panay who ran the local program. And Jerry hit the nail on the head. Jerry was always the visionary and I was the one that kept things ticking right along. Um, and for years and years, we worked together uh, in really almost perfect cohesion to make the program keep flowing. Uh, Jerry had his way of doing things and I had my way of doing things. And together we made it work. Uh, but as that little 23-year-old that was hired, first of all, uh, working for somebody like Jerry has been such an amazing joy and journey along the way, but it blew my mind in the absolute beginning um, as to how some of these things would work. And I'll never forget one day, uh, Mary Panay took me aside and said, Ray, you're going to have to manage him in some areas, and he's going to like it. And I don't know if that ever was the case, Jer, but I have to say that sitting down and giving you 10 minutes to thank everybody that you've worked with and whose lives you've touched and been there for was just absolutely not feasible. I don't know how many pages or slides you prepared for your remarks, but we were all aware they were going to take longer than 10 minutes. And it's revised now. This is absolutely without a doubt my favorite portion that we've had of any of our kinship care celebrations. Um, so there's always more to say. Uh, we haven't even scratched the surface, but thank you, Jerry, for everything that you've done for the navigator, for our team, for kinship care, kinship caregivers, professionals. Um, we will continue on the good work. Keep up the good work, Ray. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, and right on time, it's one o'clock now, so that was perfectly planned. Um, we're going to transition to the last portion of our program for the day, which is a presentation on the Kinship Care Toolkit, resources for individuals caring for children impacted by parental substance use and or overdose. Um, as many of you recall, this was a project that was started back in our Kinship Care Month celebration and conference in 2019. We've had amazing support from OASIS, and I'm going to turn it over to Pat Lincourt to give us an update on what's been happening and to reveal the product. Thank you, Pat. 
Thank you. Well, first of all, let me just uh, send um, regrets from Commissioner Gonzalez Sanchez, who wanted to be here personally. Um, she unfortunately had a scheduling conflict that she couldn't change. She is in Albany and uh, was, uh, I would just talked to her this morning and she, she told me how much she uh, wanted to have been able to be at this uh, uh, specific event uh, because it meant so much to her when she came here. I think it was um, now two years ago, um, um, and she heard, um, as I just have, from people who are um, caring for children, um, uh, particularly, you know, close to her heart, children um, whose parents have been lost to substance use disorder. Um, as everyone, you know, knows the statistic, I think at this point, um, because it's been so um, much in the press, 93,000 people died last year of a opioid overdose. And uh, that's a tragedy for all of us. And every one of those person impacted a family. And so many of them were younger people who had children who were impacted. So the um, in, uh, importance of family members being able to step in um, and whether the person is unable to care for their children because of their addiction or whether they, are, um, they unfortunately had suffered a fatal overdose the uh, ability of, of grandparents um, and other family members to step in and to provide uh, continuity um, within the family and, and care for those children is um, uh, vital, you know, as people have mentioned, um, you know, throughout this last hour, not only to those children and the family that it impacts, but also to the community as a whole. When the commissioner was here, she heard um, about a need. Par uh, family members were saying, um, uh, from what I understand of that, that uh, it, so in September of 2019, I could have gone to the next slide and known that for sure. Uh, she, uh, she, when she attended the um, Kim Chip Care Summit, she heard family members saying that they um, they were having difficulty knowing how to talk to children about parental overdose and substance use disorder. Um, it's it can be a difficult conversation to have, especially with younger children um, uh, and adolescents as well. Um, without you know um, you know be blaming uh, the parent, but also being able to explain what addiction is and and how people. Um, get um, uh, you know, uh, caught in an addictive um, relationship with a substance. And when you're also talking about grief, um, the you know, grief of the loss of that parent, um, it can be, those conversations can be really difficult. So what she asked my team to do, um, uh, led by Maria Morris Groves, who many of you may know, um, uh, worked with OC, uh, OCF, as well as OMH um, to um, develop a toolkit so that uh, parents would have access to a toolkit um, to be helpful um, in those conversations. Uh, we did, um, we, we wanted to make sure that what was developed was, you know, hit the, the what was really the issues that uh, parents and kinship caregivers were, were experiencing. And so uh, it's taken a while to get here. Uh, the pandemic didn't, didn't help it, uh, you know, as other people have acknowledged. Um, but we did um, have, have some focus groups with kinship caregivers, uh, which was coordinated by the kinship navigator. So that was also a partnership in the development of this tool. Um, and to identify what are the needs? What do people need to see in this kind of a toolkit? So next. Um, in the findings, what, what uh, caregivers talked about was more than just guidance, that they really wanted to understand better, um, you know, what resources there were for uh, grieving and loss um, for um, themselves, as well as for the um, children they were caring for parenting um, specific to, um, uh, to the circumstances, uh, self-care um, and trauma. Uh, because of course, um, you know, parental substance use disorder often leads to um, traumatizing events for children. Um, and then also worksheets to use with youth um, uh, so that they would have some actual materials and caregivers who wanted a toolkit to be simple, concise, and easily accessible online. So that was the feedback. Um, if we go to the next slide. 
what we did with that feedback is that um, using those focus groups as a starting point, uh, the OASA staff conducted uh, research on content that was already out there, what already existed in the specific space that um, could be drawn upon. Um, so the, it, and also employed a graphic designer. So, you know, as everybody knows, if you have, um, you know, content by itself in lots of text can be very difficult for people to digest. So um, the designers also held focus groups to see, to get feedback um, about what, uh, you know, what was um, most attractive and, and um, helpful for people who would be utilizing these tools. Um, and then uh, finally in June of uh, this year, we were able to have um, that uh, the draft and um, had uh, reviews by the Kinship Navigator and, uh, and others as well. So in the toolkit, and I'll show you um, in, a, in a slide or two ahead what it looks like, um, topics that are covered is talking about parental overdose and substance use. Um, and language to use in, in talking about substance use too, um, avoiding stigmatizing words and helping people to have a person first language. Oftentimes, um, you know, people become defined by their substance use, uh, recognizing that there's a whole person there um, and that uh, there's a um, for children's perspective, a parent there. Uh, issues around grief and loss and particular difficulty um, for young children um, dealing with the loss of a parent. Um, connecting with youth, um, ways to, you know, make those connections, uh, uh, you know, with this age group. Um, uh, how to discuss the risks of substance use at any age. So what are the ways, you know, what are some preventive strategies that uh, kinship caregivers can utilize? Uh, uh, things that have been shown to be effective in the in the research. Exercises for youth in kinship care, so something very concrete. That was one of the things that the that the focus group had um, had talked about. And then also the self-care. So, you know, how do you cut out space for yourself and manage your own feelings and emotions around them, all of this and um, do some caretaking of your own of the caretaker. So um, this is um, the the tool the how to use the toolkit. It sits on um, the, um, the the OASAS website. Uh, there's an overview. Um, there are uh, materials to download and to print, um, and uh, you can click on the download for and save any document that you that you choose to do. You can see here talking about kinship care itself and and how well it works to to. Um, support families um, discussing parental overdose, so specific um, uh, ideas for how to um, discuss uh, overdose with the child, uh, self-care, stages of grief, and some red flags to look for um, uh, as well. Next. And this is uh, one of uh, but the, yeah, a layout of the of the kinship care works and stages of grief and positive affirmation for kids and and teens, talking uh, about um, you know each of the um, um, subjects from from the overview uh, page. Uh, next. So next steps, uh, one of our priorities is uh, translating the documents into other language. Uh, we, we do have Spanish translation in progress, but we're um, going to translate into um, uh, uh, at least the seven languages um, that are most prominent in New York. Um, the toolkit is considered a living document. Um, as things change, as more resources are developed, we're, uh, and we intend to add to it now that that web page is there. And we're very interested, as we were at the start of this process, with the end consumer's needs. So if there are things that you feel are missing from the toolkit, if there are things that um, have become more prominent that, you know, since the time of the fo uh, focus groups, we're always open to feedback about it and things that we could do to expand it. Um, as well as any, any uh, feedback that you have about the way things are couched or, um, you know, if you know of resources, um, additional resources as well. So this is where uh, the toolkit can be found. Um, it is um, 
I'll also link to the OASAS prevention pages, and it is on also the New York State Kinship Navigator webpage. So we're excited about this. We, uh, you know, it's been a long time. As I mentioned, the commissioner was committed to this at the very beginning, and um, I, you know, I meet with her regularly, and it was often the very first thing on her agenda is where are we, um, and uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what, 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 what more do we, you know, how could we get it out faster? She was uh, very interested in in having this resource for families. Um, so there's uh, the contact information um, uh, to Maria and, um, and Katie Seward who are responsible for maintaining the toolkit online. Um, but certainly I saw a, a comment in the chat, to, you know, somebody wanting to reach out directly to me and absolutely please uh, do that. My own contact information is Pat. Dot Lincourt, L I N C O U R T, at oasis.ny.gov. And I'm happy to hear from you and to, you know, uh, we can accommodate, uh, you know, uh, input. So um, I don't have a, a lot else to talk about here. Um, I uh, don't know if there's a capacity to take comments or questions. Um, we are, uh, you know, I was uh, very pleased to have the opportunity to come and to listen, particularly um, I was able to join as people were speaking to um, the awards and to their own experiences. And um, in particular, the woman who talked about losing her daughter, it is, um, uh, a far too, um, far too common story where young people who are on a pathway to doing well have one um, uh, slip and, and end up, um, uh, it, you know, in an overdose fatality and um, the grief that parents and, um, and her child will, will experience over time. It's just devastating to us. And um, hopefully, um, you know, a, a, a tool like this will be supportive to people who are in those situations. Um, and, um, and so I want to thank you for the opportunity to have come and be able to roll this out officially uh, at, this uh, at this conference. And uh, thank you very much for, for that opportunity. Thank you so much, Pat. We are thrilled to have this resource available to kinship caregivers. It's partnerships with state agencies like OASIS and OCFS and OTDA uh, and the voices of kinship caregivers coming to, to your offices and having you respond and, and make tools like this that really advance uh, uh, the well being of children in, in kinship care. So we thank you so much for uh, you and the team at OASIS putting this together and rolling this out for kinship caregivers and walking us through it here today. So thank you so much, Pat. We were sent a lovely uh, poem by Rolanda Pyle. Um, I'm going to leave it up here on screen for you all to see uh, as we wrap today's program up. Um, so I first want to say thank you to all of you who participated in today's event. Uh, again, we're sad that it had to be virtual, but hey, you know what? We had uh, uh, over 100 people here today. So that's really exciting. And we're glad that so many were able to take part with us to celebrate Kinship Care Month here in New York State. And as Jerry mentioned, the push for National Kinship Care Month uh, with his leadership and the leadership of Child Welfare League of America. We're excited to see that roll out later this month, hopefully. Uh, so again, thank you to um, our speakers, Assemblyman Hevesy, uh, Senator Mayer, uh, Senator Seward Cousins. Thank you to all of our awardees for taking the time uh, out of your day today to come and speak to us, to be honored. We're so happy we can honor you. Uh, with Cura Awards. Thank you to AFFCNY, to Maria Gilborn, um, and certainly thank you to Jerry Wallace. Jerry, your legacy um, is unmatched. We love you. We think you're just the best guy ever. Um, we're really going to miss you uh, from a kinship standpoint, but you're my neighbor, so I'm going to come over to your house, and uh, we can have a lot of fun hanging out. Um, again, thank you to everybody. Uh, don't forget this coming Sunday, is Grandparents Day. So it's a special way to celebrate uh, grandparents during Kinship Care Month. So find your grandparent and thank them uh, 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 for what they've done. Um, and uh, you can check out the Kinship Navigator website for any updates on kinship care activities happening during the month of September. Be on the lookout. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for our newsletter, please do so. We send out kinship tidbits every week with information about upcoming presentations 
and things like that. So you can sign up for our, uh, for our newsletter on the Navigator website. You can sign up for the Coalition newsletter on the Coalition website. Uh, again, thank you to OCFS for helping uh, you know, put, <laughs> put together the governor's proclamation and for sponsoring our program. Uh, we thank everybody who was involved today. Uh, and that will wrap up our program. And thank you to Ray for being such a great uh, director and stepping in and, and filling some big shoes that, that Jerry is leaving behind. We really appreciate you, Ray, as well, um, for all that you've done to uh, keep the ship moving in the right direction uh, as we continue into uh, new and uncharted territory. So thank you, everybody, for participating today. And that will end our presentation. Thank, Thank you, you so everyone. Much. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful day and celebrating Kinship Care Month for the rest of September.